next revision topic is your Thevenin's theorem, in which we can convert a given circuit into Thevenin's equivalent form, which will be consisting of your Thevenin's voltage, Thevenin's resistance RTH, and the load resistance. So here we can see that we are having one simple example, in which we are having a circuit consisting of 10 volt source, three different resistances, and one load resistance. Here the meaning of load resistance is that the resistance across which we have to find out the value of current or the value of voltage across the resistance. So if we want to have the amount of current flowing through 6 ohm resistance, we can also choose 6 ohm as a load resistor. So first we have to define load resistance whenever we have to find out the Thevenin's equivalent circuit. So we can see that we are representing the same circuit into a form of a circuit consisting of three different parameters, one voltage and two resistances and the last the load resistance is required. So first step when we have to find out the value of RTH that is Thevenin's resistance. So for calculation of Thevenin's resistance your current source if you are having any current source that will be open circuited and if you are having any voltage source that will be short circuited. So in the given in the given example, there is no any current source. So there is only a single voltage source that will be short circuited. And the second thing is we have to remove the load resistor. Now the given circuit can be seen as here the resistances are 12, 2 and 6. So it is 12 ohm. This resistance is 2 ohm. This resistance is 6 ohm. Now we are shorting the voltage supply. This voltage is now shorted here. And we are removing the load distance. Suppose this terminal is A and B from where we have removed the load. So at this stage we have to find out the RTH value. Now we can see that the resistance is 12 ohm and 6 ohm. They are in parallel. And they are making a connection in series with 2 ohm resistance. So it will be 12 cross 6 upon 12 plus 6 plus 2. So that is 6 ohm. So now the calculated value of RTH is your 6 ohm. Once RTH is done, the second portion is we have to find out the VTH value. So for VTH, it is important to have the source active. So since we have taken source as 10 volt, now again we are having all the components here that is 12 ohm resistance, 1 2 ohm resistance, and 1 6 ohm resistance. Here the second step, again we have to remove the RL whenever we are finding the VTH value. So after reviewing RL we can say that it is the VOC. So your VTH is also known as VOC that is the open circuit voltage drop across the terminal from where your RL is removed. So just remember that your VTH will not be equals to your voltage drop across load resistors because we are removing the RL before finding the VTH value. So in this given circuit, we can see that whenever we have to find out the drop across terminal A and B, so 6 ohm is in parallel here. So once we find out the drop across 6 ohm, that will be the drop across the terminal A and B. You can also see that this 2 ohm resistance is open circuited, so there will not be any flow of current through this path. So for finding the voltage drop across 6 ohm, you can apply voltage division rule as the total voltage into the resistance across which we have to find out the voltage drop divided by the sum of total resistance. So it will be 10 cross 6 by 80. So it will be 10 by 3 volts. So this is one method by which we can find out the voltage across 6 ohm. The second method is you can also find out by finding the total currents I. So first the current I value will be equal to 10 upon 80 ampere. Next, when we have to find out the voltage drop across 6 ohm, it will be 10 upon 18 into 6. This value is again 10 by 3 volt. So either use your voltage division form or you can use simple KVN in this given loop to find out the voltage drop across this 6 ohm resistance. Since, since this 6 ohm resistance is in parallel with the terminal A and B, we can say that the VTH value or VOC value will be 10 by 3 volt. 
Now we are having two part. One is RTH of 6 ohm and VTH of 10 by 3 volt. So we can conclude this circuit as a VTH value of 10 by 3 volt. Now in series the RTH value which we have calculated as 6 ohm. So it is 6 ohm. And here the RL value will be presented in series. So this is your final circuit which is known as Thevenin's equivalent circuit. So whenever we have to find out Thevenin's equivalent circuit, first we have to find out the VTH value, then we have to find out the RTH value. Now we have to make RTH in series with RL to form a complete circuit. So if we have to find out the amount of current flowing through this load resistance, so that will be simply equals to the total voltage drop that is VTH divided by resistances 6 plus your RL value that will be your simple IL value. So take another example for Thevenin circuit. If we take this example, again first thing is we have to find out the RTH because we have to convert this circuit into a simpler circuit consisting of VTH. So this will be your RL, this will be your RTH and this will be your VTH. So here the load resistance is not given, it is already removed from the terminal A and B. So we can suppose that there was load resistance connected across terminal A and B. So we have to keep in mind that the first task is to find out the value of RTH. So for finding RTH, the first thing is we have to open circuit the 4 ampere current source and we need to short circuit the 24 volt voltage source. Since RL is already removed, so there is no need to remove RL again. The whole circuit can be again summarized as one 4 ohm resistance which will be in series with one 8 ohm resistance. Now this current source is being open circuited. Next part we are having this 6 ohm resistance here. This is A node, this is node B. Again two 6 ohm resistances are there and now we are shorting the current voltage source sorry here. So in this case we can see that we are having this 6 ohm, 6 ohm in parallel. The combinations can be 6 cross 6. It will be 3 ohm. Next 8 and 4 they are in series. So we can have 12 ohm. Now it will be in parallel with 6 ohm. We are having A terminal. B terminal is already having resistance of 3 ohm in combined format. So again solving this part. So 12, 6 they are in parallel. So 12 cross 6. 12 plus 6 it is 4 ohm so now we can see that we are having one 4 ohm resistance and one 3 ohm resistance here the terminals are A and B the value of RTH will be equals to 4 plus 3 equals to 7 ohm so in this case we have obtained RTH as 7 ohm Next task we have to find out the value of VTH. So for finding VTH we have to find out the potential difference across the terminal A and B. This will be your VTH. So your simply VTH value will be equals to VA minus VV part. So suppose there is any terminal C here. If we have to find out the potential difference at point A. So we have to find out the difference potential difference across this 6 ohm resistance here. And across 6 ohm resistance here. So there can be many methods either you can use source information or we can use mesh analysis here. If we are using mesh analysis we can encounter with super mesh at this point. So the easiest method is we have we can do this by using current division method. So if the total current is 4 ampere we are having one 6 ohm resistance here it is 8 and 4 ohm resistance. So the current going through this 4 
ampere current zones it will be being divided across 6 ohm and 8 and 4 so whenever we have to find out the current across 6 ohm resistance in this case so the current across 6 ohm resistance it will be equals to the total current as 4 ampere because it is being divided across this 8 4 and 6 so it will be 4 into 12 divided by total value of resistance so this is known as current division I mentioned that the resistance having smaller value will receive larger current so that's why whenever we have to find out current across the 6 ohm resistance we have to multiply 4 ampere into this resistance and divide by total value of resistance so 8 plus 4 plus 6 so now we are having 4 cross 12 So the value will be 8 by 3 ampere. Now we know the current across 6 ohm is 8 by 3 ampere. Then the voltage drop across 6 ohm will be 8 by 3 times of 6. It will be 16 volt. So next task is to find out the potential difference across the terminal B and C. So here if we are finding the drop across 6 ohm that will be same across B and C. So now the current direction will be this. So at this point we can see that we are having 6 ohm resistances. Both are same value. So the voltage will be divided equally among them. So it is 24. So the voltage drop across this will be 12 volt. Across this it will be 12 volt. Since the current direction is upward. So now for this case current direction is downward. So for this case the drop will be minus 12 here. And here we have calculated as the drop value was 16. So here the drop value was 16. So the total value of VTH, it will be equals to 16 minus minus of 12. That will be 28 volt. So now we can see that we are having this VTH value as 28 volt and the value of RTH is as 7. So the value of RTH is 7 ohm and the value of VTH is 28 volt. Since the RL is not mentioned here, we can keep this circuit as open here. If RL value was there, we can include this A and B with one RL resistance or load resistance. So this is your final equivalent Thevenin's resistance value as 7, Thevenin's equivalent voltage as 28 and the overall Thevenin's equivalent circuit is this one. which will be consisting of VTH, this is your RTH and RL will be here.